Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Roth, and today we are diving into another exploration of the awesome vampire mod Sacrosanct. We stand outside the barracks of the Whiterun hold because we're going to be doing a little bit of playtime. Now the quest specifically is called Smolier, and the details are you drain victims of their blood in order to learn hemomancy spells. The description reads, My victim's blood tasted like the tears of Arcae, with an aroma of primal lust and blood magic. A true Cold Harbor crew. I should experience this more often. Now, obviously, depending on the type of storyline you're going for your playthrough, uh, draining people... I mean, you can kind of argue that feeding on people without killing them is kind of humane, and that you're just trying to survive and not kill them, but... <laughs> this is actually draining them all dry. Like, everyone that you kill, you are draining them dry. They are going to die. So, a couple points before we dive in for those of you that really want to get into the RP of your character. Uh, I will first off point out that there is an ability called Kiss of Death when you are sated. Where, when you drain a victim, you get increased health, magicka, and stamina. That's a permanent bonus by plus one. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you fed on a lot of people, that's basically three levels worth of ten, let's see. So after eating ten people, your health, magic, and stamina are all up by ten. You would have to go up three levels to get that much stronger. So for every ten people I consume, I gain three levels worth of raw stats. That gives you kind of an idea of how, how much people you gotta eat before this really kicks in. But if you want to play a vampire like that's morally acceptable and still want to, you know, drain the souls out of, you know, drain people till they die, uh, one interesting option that I found online was join the Civil War questline, uh, either as a, the, for the M Empire or for the Stormcloaks, and then when you're going around feeding, just look for the military camps of the sect that you are opposed to. Right? I don't think I've actually. Really? Does it take me that long to find a single Imperial camp? Or a Stormcloak camp? I don't really... Oh, there we go. Okay. So, for example, there's a Stormcloak camp. Uh, if you approach them at night, they usually have one or two people that are sleeping. So, if you have a stealth-type build or the right illusion spells, you can get in there, feed, get out, or just, you know, kill them all. I mean, you know, you're the Dragonborn, you can do what you want. Uh, so that's just an idea that I thought was really clever, that allows you to leverage that kind of homicidal maniac as a vampire without, uh, without being the type of person that just offs everyone. Uh, also, I like not using this on the NPCs in town, because towns start to feel pretty empty once you start draining all of their, all of their members dry. So if you want to use this spell or use, do this quest without a lot of RP and you just want a power level, I recommend going after guards. They're NPCs that are automatically replaced by the game engine, so you just come back every few you know, weeks or so and uh, they will have restocked. Now currently, I've got the description over here on my other monitor, so let me just hop over to my destruction spells real quick. Let's see, so we've got blood. Brand, Blood Garden, Blood Seed. I think those are the only three that I've unlocked so far. Let me clear some of these other spells. We'll keep Vampiric Drain, because, I mean, thematically, that just totally works for a, for a vampire build. I'm just trying to clear out some of my other favorites, so I have an easier time grabbing my spells. Let's see. Hopefully that will... Oh, yeah, that's fine. Plus, they're, like, alphabetical, so that helps. All right. So, I've already kind of accidentally unlocked a few of these, because I've been draining people during my playthrough. So we will discuss these initially, and you know what, let's go ahead and do a save right here so I can demonstrate each of these spells as we go through them. So the first time you drain someone, you will unlock a spell called Blood Seed. Now just so you know, these are all destruction level spells, so obviously if you're a destruction mage, you are going to be uh, much more heavily rewarded to invest in this kind of a character build. Now, with Blood Seed, I believe we can find the description right here. Uh, jagged Bone Shards grow in a living or undead target, dealing 21 magic damage for 10 seconds. So that's 210 damage in the course of 10 seconds. All, all if not most, of the Blood Magic spells do damage over time. <laughs> jagged Bone Shards grow out of a living or undead target. That sounds like cancer. <laughs> 
it, it's magical vampire cancer that just like grows out of the person's body and they die. Uh, the graphics are actually pretty cool and we have some really cool lighting effects right here. So let's just have a look. What are we looking at here? Yeah, there you go. Ah, oh, man, that looks like he got through the wrong end of a wood chipper. Ah, oh, that, that just looks like it hurts. You know, that, ow. Uh, but I guess, okay, so plot-wise, this guy has already done half the Civil War quest line, obviously, as a Stormcloak soldier, which is probably why the alarm didn't get raised, because I'm their hero. But anyway, so that is that spell. And let's just reload real quick so I can show you the next one. All right, the next one. Now that, so that first one was Bloodseed. It's an apprentice level spell. So basically you start off as a vampire and you can just go to town with that particular ability. Now this next spell is Bloodbrand. You will unlock this after you have drained three victims. So you could pick up both of these spells by just draining three, by basically emptying this guard post we're about to go into. You could unlock the first three, maybe, or the first two, but maybe the first three if you're good if, if you're strategic about it you might be able to unlock the first three spells within one feeding session so blood brand we've got living or undead targets take 17 magic damage per second after 10 seconds they detonate for 356 damage uh, keep in mind my destruction is way high so you are seeing the end game version of what the spell can do and i think we still have our lovely uh lovely little guinea pig over there we'll call him tim Tim, I do apologize, but this is for the viewers. So, uh, all right, so after 10 seconds it explodes. I'm not even sure he's gonna last that long. He did not. I want to see it explode. So, okay, let's, whoa, okay. <laughs> Wait, does that hurt everything else? It detonates for 356 damage. Okay, so if it detonates after 10 seconds, that made like that moved items and stuff. So I assume that would hurt like multiple targets let's see where could i tick off a group of willing subjects and have them all come at me at the same time and they need to have enough health for the spell to detonate because they can't die or have a lot of health hmm how will we solve this puzzle let's uh start with the mage i'm sure he's high level oh yeah he's modded all right who else can we tick off here i've got a mage after me Oh, this thing is precise. Oh, jeez, they're... Ha! <laughs> they're, uh... Okay, I didn't think this demonstration would be this hard to do... After the civil... After you've beaten Whiterun. <laughs> they literally helped me murder this guy. I did not expect that. And now we're... Okay, alright. So that didn't work out too well. Alright, we're gonna have to try something else. Let's see, we're just gonna load this real quick. I'm going to have to make sure I am set upon by ruffians. Should be alright if we just run off the little section here. I'll just have to work a little bit of uh, console magic. Oh no, I'm being attacked! Jeez, whatever shall I do? Uh, okay, so we're looking at blood brand. Alright, so our goal here is to make sure we can land this on a lot of people and see once it explodes if it hits them, it hits multiples. Okay, I've got cluster together. Oh, are they all dying too fast as well? They might be. Oh, no, this guy looks... There we go! Okay, did that hurt his buddy over here? I think it did. Huh. Okay, so, let's, uh... Yeah, I think that... I think that did what I was hoping it would do. Oh. Relax, whoever that is. Okay. All right, so that was your uh, blood brand spell. It's a single target. It, la it hurts for 10 seconds, and then it explodes. And it looks like it did do some damage, but the explosion isn't very big, so I wouldn't count on it. Unless you're dealing with, like, narrow hallways and that kind of stuff. In that case, they can't really dodge to save their lives anyway. Uh, next, we'll have Blood Garden. This is another fun one. Uh, let's hop over to the description. So for Blood Garden, you need to... This is six victims. After six victims, you will unlock Blood Garden. This will cast Blood Seed on all targets and inflicts 39 magic damage for 10 seconds. All right, I think this time we will... What are you doing out in the middle of the night? There are bandits about that I am literally spawning because it makes my life easier. All right, let's see. Blood Garden, here we go. Now... I like this effect. Like, it's a slower spell, 
So you have to be very careful when you aim it over longer distances. And as you can see, it just does flat da flat damage over time. Nothing fancy. <laughs> now they decide to come after me. All right, let's just. Uh, there we go. See, this this suits the destruction mage in me because I, I'm, I'm not very precise in my my spells. Being able to just blow the crap out of everything. Uh, yeah, that just suits my style of play just fine. All right, but as you can see, that's just a flat damage spell. Nothing fancy. There's no extra vulnerabilities, no extra things you unlock after you do that. But it's very helpful in that is an area of effect spell. So that's one that you can actually use periodically when you're in tight corners. You can lure enemies into corners or use a variety of apocalypse spells to slow down and tie up your enemies into groups and then just pummel them. All right, which brings us to the reason I'm parked outside this house. The next one is called Blood Scourge. And as you can see, I have not unlocked that yet because I haven't drained 10 people yet. So we're going to check on my stealth skill first to make sure I'm high enough to do this. This works a lot better when you are stealthy. So we're going to do a little bit of modification real quick. Voila, we are suddenly oh so much more powerful. Let's see. All right, that's says there we are. Sneak of a hundred. All right. Yes, I know this is kind of cheap in that I'm you know just jumping right to a high level, but I really want to show you guys how this stuff works. And frankly, in order to unlock all of the spells that you get by eating people, I have to eat at least another twenty people, and I've only got one video in which to do this. So bear with me. All right, we are currently a stealth monster. We'll throw on muffle just to make sure, and uh, let's go about our business. We're just going to uh, ignore any guards that are here because my stealth is super high, so I should be fine. I have been experiencing a sneak glitch lately. I don't know who it is tied, which mod it is tied to, but hopefully this doesn't screw me over. All right, so the crew, the trick here, we're going to be draining for lethal effect, and we need a total of ten. And I don't know how to see where my current total is at, but I already have blood garden, so I have at least six. The nice thing is this does not break stealth. No. However, he does cry out in pain. So if there are waking guards nearby, you have to be careful because that will set them off. That will alert them that there is trouble. And but if they're still if the others are still sleeping, they don't wake from it. So this is a great starter location for nursing your, your vampiric skills. I'm going to show you the next stage that gives you more kills, but it's also a little more challenging stealth-wise. And there are a couple of apocalypse spells that can make it both more manageable and more fun. But let's go ahead and finish here before the, the next changing of the guard occurs. Pretty sure I've unlocked the new spell by now, but we're just going to make sure. Alright, so I believe this is five people so far that I've drained which means I have five more health, five more stamina, five more magicka permanently. That's not going anywhere. I think that's everyone here. Yep, okay, let's get out of here before uh, anyone pokes their head and realizes the dragon board is leaving and everyone else is magically, you know, drained of every ounce of blood. That kind of alerts people as to what your purpose was in showing up in the first place. All right, so we should have unlocked. Ta-da, blood scourge. All right, let's see. Blood Scourge. This is expert level spell. Living or undead takes 71 magic damage for 15 seconds. On death spreads to all nearby targets. All right, so one of the combinations I like to do is combine this with Blood Garden. So Blood Garden inflicts damage over time on people in a group. And then Blood Scourge, when one of those guys dies, everyone next to them gets reinfected with Blood Scourge. So once you get up to expert level blood magic spells, you can just, yeah, you can cut through people real quick. Of course, you kind of, I guess I'll just show you guys what the cinematics looks like. We won't worry about bringing down a huge army on my head just yet. All right, as you can see, so, whoa, okay, there, that was actually a pretty good radius. That was a much bigger radius than the other, uh, the earlier one. I think it was Blood Brand that detonated after a while, but that explosion was super tiny. So this one has a much bigger blast radius. So once he died, any bad guys near in his vicinity 
trying to circle that and it's not working, uh, would have also been infected with blood brand. So that's a, it's a great way to clear mobs and uh, yeah, works really good, particularly for destruction based characters, obviously. Uh, also, I believe you'll notice when I'm feeding, it says lifeblood drained. That means that I'm also adding to my vampire perks, my vampire lord perks, while I'm in human form, which I really love. Uh, let's see if we can't just, yep, yeah, pop over to it. All right, so that was what I call easy mode, right? You just go in through the front door. Sometimes there's a guy sitting at the front door, but he's not paying much attention. You sneak into the back. Life's pretty good. Now, the next level of difficulty, if you want to push your stealth powers a bit more, is Riften, and I'm about to show you why. Now, we're going to go over into Illusion. We're going to need some Muffle, and I should still have, yes, Ghost Walk. All right, so if you guys remember this Apocalypse level spell, Ghost Walk marks your location, moves you, you move wherever you want, la -di -da -di -da -di -da -di -da. and when the spell wears off, or you attack, it does its work, and we're about to see that in three, two, one, and it teleports you back. So we're going to be implementing these two spells into our next feeding frenzy. The next spell we're looking for is called Blood Onk, and you get that at 15 drainings. So we should be able to leave this place with Blood Onk locked and loaded. And this is why I wanted to max out my stealth for this, because, yeah, it can be a little tricky. Let's just sneak on past here. There's usually one guy patrolling the stairs, so hopefully... Oh, yep. Yeah. Alright, they're not alerted yet that something's wrong, so technically I could just walk past them and be fine. But I'm trying to get into the spirit of things. Alright, so this is a blind spot, right? Whenever they're patrolling, they're gonna just walk right past the spot and not notice. It's a great place to hide. I've used it many times. And this is how you combine apocalypse spells with Sacrosanct, because this is awesome. All right, so what I'd like to do, this will not break invisibility, but remember, my invisibility only has a 10 second window. So you wait till you're right there, all right? When you're at a quarter, then you drain. And right when you finish draining, there, see, do you hear him cry out? Now it looks like, it looks like the guards downstairs didn't hear, so it might be okay. But this is a good habit because you'll get the feed in and you can try and get two or three feedings in at one time. We're going to shoot for two and see if we can't pull that off. The trick is once this guy cries out in pain, the nearest guard that hears is going to come running. Yep, we don't have enough time. Yep, yep, combat has started. Boom! And I'm hiding. Yep, and there's the little red dot of our, uh, our guy. Oh, two. That's two. Oh, and I'm hidden again. There we go. All right. There is also an, a, per, a perk you'll want to get in the illusion skill tree if you're doing the ordinator perks and you happen to be running the rest of this. Uh, let's see. It's illusion, and it is called silent storm. This makes all of your spells silent, which makes your illusion stuff much more feasible when you're six inches away from a guard. Oh, it's a third one. Oh, this is going to be... Okay, so we're going to have to wait for them to... Or do we have to? <laughs> They're all upstairs, right? Remember? There were sleeping guys downstairs. <laughs> Excusez-moi. You look tasty. All right, so this should draw the guards downstairs because he's going to cry out. There we go. Combat starts. I teleport back to this little hidey hole. Wait for the guards to run downstairs, which they should do soon, unless I'm mistaken. Oh, yep, there we go. I'm going to find whoever did this. Of course you are. Or maybe he'll find you. Oh, okay, gotta be careful with him. That is a essential NPC. You can't kill him and you can't feed him to death. So you uh, gotta be careful. All right, where are we at here? I think this guy's still left over. Yep. Oh geez, I may have fed too soon. Uh, I think we'll be okay. Alright, good, good, good. I'm going to find whoever did this. Okay, I think we're alright. Yeah, that didn't even trigger combat. If you're far enough away from the guards that are actively patrolling, you can just 
go through and eat everybody and no problem. But you got to... When you're first getting a, the hang of the character, I highly recommend having a place to fall back to via teleportation when you break stuff. Just in case you overlook... You can't, you can't look behind you very easily when you're doing this. So if a uh, patrolling person is going by and you don't know they're there, it can be, this can very easily blow up in thy face. So let's just... Uh, who else we got here? Wait for the timer to go down. 50%, 40... Uh, that should do it. And draining. Let it begin. Oop. Oh, that is so close. Okay. Alright, so that guy cried out downstairs, which should have drawn the guard downstairs. Okay. I think my character has the sneak feeding ability that you can get later on when you progress as a vampire. But it only allows you to feed. So if I were to sneak up behind a live waking person and try to feed, I wouldn't be able to drain them. Unless I was, like, blood starved. And at that point, um, feeding is a... Uh, not obligatory. You, you'll, you won't have the option to non-lethally feed if you're blood starved. But if you're eating this many people, you'll basically never be blood starved. So, yeah, that helps too. Alright, now thus far we've been able to consume... Wow, I've lost count. Let's see. We can just one, two, three, four, five, maybe six guards so far that we've consumed. We're going to try and get the rest of them. I think the rest of them are all downstairs. Is there another one over here, I believe? Yes. Oh, yep, let's wait for the... Uh, eh, whatever. Okay. Oh, well, that was close. Okay, they're looking for me. Alright, I think that was the last one, which means we got another eight people. Oh, that... That, that is as close as your little vampire butt is going to get to being impaled on a card sword. Uh, okay, well, that said, I think we're just going to uh, vacate the premises unless anyone else here needs to be drained. I don't think so. Alrighty. Alright, so that is what I consider medium difficulty when you are uh, going about trying to feed on as many replaceable NPCs as possible. Obviously you could go through town, break into all the doors and just kind of feed on all the Nareems you can, Nazims you can find. But uh, I like to provide a bit of a challenge to you guys and uh, some options for leveling up your feeding frenzy. We're gonna pop over to, uh, let's see. Well, if I want to show off the next spell, I'm gonna need something to, to show it off on. So we'll probably just save here and then pop back. All right, so we should have unlocked. We, we fed on a lot of people. We should have a new one by now. Blood Onk, there we go. Hexes the corpse of a living or undead being, causing it to levitate and explode. All right, so let's, uh, let's see. What's our most destructive spell? I think it's Blood Scourge. Okay, so this one does like uber amounts of damage. And then Onk. All right, so Blood Onk is specifically for corpses. So... That's my right hand. So my left hand is going to kill this poor soul. Charge up our Ankh. And... Voila. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Alright, I don't know what to do with the whole in the air thing. I mean, I guess that kind of extends the reach a little bit. <laughs> oh, it counts as ghostly remains? That's pretty cool. Like, you... You bl disintegrated the body and converted him into a spirit essence. That was pretty cool. I liked that. And it looked creepy. And it looks like no one actually saw me do it. So I can go through the rest of this tutorial uh, without fear of repercussions. I like it. All right, let's switch, switch us back to uh, Muffle and Ghost Walk. All right, this is the most challenging feed location that I have come across. But it also is the most... There's more to feed on than anywhere else that I've found. Although I haven't snuck around Solitude yet. So if we have time, we might try Solitude after this. All right, yeah, I can just I can just waltz on in here right now because I haven't, you know, no one's started dying yet, so they're not uh, too concerned with little old me. 
but if we just go back a little bit, all right, now we're in stealth, and we're just gonna, I think, I might, yeah, I'm gonna do this in first person, it just makes this a little easier. Let's just, I like this little dark section right here, just uh, hop on top of this chest. It keeps you enough in the shadows that it makes it easier, well, it makes you more difficult to detect. And that is the name of the game. And I can cast my spells silently, and then, uh, Oh, this is going to be risky. Okay, we're definitely going to save before trying this because I am right in this guy's line of sight. Oh, this is going to be good. All right, here we go. All right, I've only got 10 out. Now, with this one, you remember in Riften, I would get a little sloppy and wait, and, and I would start feeding right now. But no, we are definitely going to wait because this has to be timed perfectly. You feed. You finish feeding. You teleport back. He cries out in pain. There we go. Okay, so this is a little teaser, but the longer you are a vampire, you you age in Sacrosanct. There's like 13 f levels of vampiric aging that you can unlock, and they all have new perks. And that obviously that's a video for another time. Uh, but you actually technically you age faster the more you drain. So draining also will accelerate the speed at which you can unlock vam other vampire abilities. But that is definitely for another video, because, like, yeah, I do not have time for that. But it's coming. All right, now let's see if I can get through the next 10 seconds without getting killed. All right, that's one alerted. That's two. All the other guards get up, so that's five. Okay, all right, it's not too bad. That's level one. Actually, this place is a little... The last time I was here, there was twice as many guards, but that was before I finished the the fight in Whiterun. I wonder if that affects the number of guards that are, you know, in play. Okay, I'm getting a little bored, so we're going to try something a little greedy. Because this guy hasn't woken up yet. Oh, wait, well, I almost forgot. Got it. Oh, jeez! Okay. Okay, I forgot. If you... Do an action, not just if you attack, but if you do an action, it'll break stealth. So we're going to nibble on this guy once I once I run down the clock, right? I'm at 50% for my invisibility, so we just got to wait a little bit longer. There we go. And drain. Oh, yeah, stay in stealth, stay in stealth, stay in stealth. Oh, that was a loud one. Okay. Ooh, this time there was no one close enough. Alright, so everyone's patrolling, looking for the intruder. Now, here's a quick trick. Oh, that's why. It's the middle of the day. What am I doing here in the middle of the day? That makes no sense. Alright. We're going in at midnight, baby. Let's see, 12, 11, there we go. Alright. This will help. So, I guess the semi-easy mode is to come in here during the day and feed, because the night shift is sleeping. But we're going to uh, come in here in the middle of the night, and then things should be a little more challenging. All right, we've got our three NPCs. <laughs> this is the creepy part. Maybe someone will mod this later on. But they literally s sleep in the same bed as the corpse because the NPCs are being respawned as they die. <laughs> and there's only four minutes. <laughs> oh, it's funny. All right, let's see. So it looks like everyone is patrolling towards the entrance. Oh, except that guy. Oh, okay, we're going to wait just a sec. Oh, no. Okay, if they're all clustered around that body, because I saw one guy over here. we got to be careful. You look for the red pickpocket button, pickpocket button, and when you've got two bodies that are stacked on top of each other, that's how you can tell which one is uh, alive. Of course, me being an idiot, I went and fed on this guy before my time had run out, so we're going to get some distance before I teleport. There we go. Okay, so we should be okay if I'm not stuck behind these crates. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, level 100 stealth is nothing to be underestimated. All right, now if we wait patiently, they should go back to sleep as if there's nothing wrong. Yes, everything is fine. Three of your people just, like, spontaneously died for no reason. What happened? I happened. I don't consider it murder, I consider it a dietary supplement. You are simply sacrifices to be made in my quest to unlock blood magic. Besides, I'm going to use it to save Skyrim, so it, 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 it works out in the end. Oh, what happened? What 
All right, so notice the two living patrollers are on the right, left-hand side of the room. So we head over to the right side. There should be, there we go. All right, wait, wait out the clock a little bit. Uh, that should do it. All right, drain this guy. When he cries out, it'll draw the guards towards my location, but I'm teleporting over here. Wait, where'd they go? <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm not, not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. No one coming? Guys, I was supposed to... This was supposed to be hard. Uh, all right. Well, I guess if you're at a lower level and your stealth isn't already at a hundred, this is a lot harder. I challenge you to try this without um, ghost walk. Oh, okay. We've got people in the room now. We have people in the room now, and I didn't ghost walk. That's gonna crank things up. Okay. Let's see if this. See how well this stealth position works when I didn't teleport here. Oh, oh. I think we're all right. Except that now I'm stuck in this little nook here. I, I can't quite, it won't let me jump. Oh, oh, come on, all right. This this can happen when you are stuck in this spot. Oh, okay, I'm out, but I'm trying not to. Okay, let's see. This is another dark spot over here you can use and you won't get stuck in crates. But I am curious to see if this guy's gonna go to sleep or if he's still patrolling. All right, let's give, okay, cannot wait, all enemies are nearby. All right, I th think that's all we were gonna get out of this place, because there will always be someone on patrol, but we got a lot of bodies out of that. That was at least eight kills. So we should have, what's the next one here? So we got Blood on Profaned Sun. Let's have a look at that one. Excellent, okay, so this is your first master level spell. This is fire magic, so it's kind of switching from vampire to flame. I guess for vampires that makes sense that the most powerful vampire could use fire because vampires take extra damage from fire. All right, so the profaned sun, a flaming star that follows the target for 20 seconds, dealing 97 magic and fire damage to living targets near it. So we're gonna go ahead and save right here and then, uh, well, since we have one man that has somehow survived my feeding frenzy, he shall demonstrate this spell for us. Oh! 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 Okay, so that spell happened in two parts. The first one, I don't know if you noticed, it was a little bolt that went straight to the target. Right, I think I can show it. There we go. So it hits the target, it summons a sun at your location, and then that sun moves to the target, chases him. And anyone caught in the vicinity takes damage over time. So if you have it's just uh, don't mind me. <laughs> that was kind of funny. For a second, I thought he was trying to like patrol the wall. You know, the wall may have done something offensive. You can't be sure. But this actually should give us a good view of what this thing does from a distance. There we go. All right, it chases him. Does a lot of fire damage, and he explodes. Okay. Oh, geez. I don't remember that happening last time. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, I think I think the bones were here earlier, but the ghostly remains are definitely his. Very, very cool. All right, so that was Profaned Sun. That is technically fire damage, if I'm not mistaken. You unlock Profaned Sun after 21 drainings. So once you've drained over almost two dozen people, then you, uh, you have that. So we're going to see if I can sneak out of here without... Everyone trying to kill me, because that can happen if you get caught. Even if you, if they recognize you and then you elude them in those chambers and you step outside, you can still get caught and then you've got more problems. All right, so we need to get the last spell, which means I need to eat about seven more people, give or take. So we're gonna go to solitude and see if we can find the soldier's quarters. It's gotta be somewhere in Castle Dower, right? That shouldn't be too hard to find. Do, 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 do. Don't mind me, just looking to eat a few of your fellow men. I'm technically not human anymore, so this is just like eating cattle. Perfectly morally acceptable, I promise. Don't suppose you'd enchant my... <laughs> oh, you think I am enchanting, do you? you Might enchant you with a spell to make sure I can track your every location. 
Okay, all right, we need to find us some people that are sleeping. What time is it? One in the morning? That is the perfect time. <laughs> Dinner is served. Uh, okay, all right, let's switch over to our uh, ghost walk muffle combo. I'm going to need a dark corner in which to land. This will probably do just fine. Ah, this is going to be good. So yeah, if you're a Stormcloak and you need uh, NPCs to feed upon, bon appetit. Oh. Alright, here's our first experiment. We're going to see if this alerts any guards. Teleports us back. Looks good. Let's make sure we're in stealth. I forgot to be in stealth the first time. That could have ended badly. Alright, let's get the next guy in the room. I'll start from the back, work my way forward. Just in case people get alerted. Alright, that is feeding number two. And we'll teleport. It's always good to be cautious. You can get overconfident and then start doing multiple feedings. And that's usually when the guards, you know, show up at the wrong time. And then you're screwed. So, we're trying to do this without getting caught. So, we can, so that it doesn't interfere with whatever playthrough you're involved with. Whether it's the Civil War or what have you. Or you're trying to become Thane of the Hold. Trying to do this without ticking off all of the characters who matter. Also by, you know, not adding a bounty to your head. Alright, let's see, that's three so far. There we go, it's like cooking fish in a barrel. Alright, so other ways you can make this more challenging. I have seen some guys, they've tried this at, as the more heroic character, which means you only feed on bandits. The challenge there is, in order to find bandits that are actually sleeping, they're hand-coded in. So, like, they're... Okay, we're not going to try and eat a legget. That would uh, not end well for us. There we go. Anyway, there are certain... I think if you go to, for example, I think it's called Pine Warrens. Uh, which is over by Riverwood. It's between Riverwood and Falkreath. There's a band. You'll find a bandit there sleeping in his bed at any time of day, right? You go in at any time. There's always a bandit sleeping. So I mean, that's you know, that'll get you started. Uh, there is a mod I believe that uh, that inputs a more routine sleep cycle into uh, the bandits, and then it's a lot easier to find bandits that are sleeping. But at that time, it also makes this a much easier feed because you can find sleeping people super easy. So it's kind of a way that you can control the difficulty of your feed and I don't know why I was walking back to my hidey hole. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? No other guards have come in here yet, so I think we're just going to finish up. I want my last spell. Got to try out the last of my blood magic. There we go. What else we got? Oh, that's a captain. I don't think we're going to be able to kill him, but uh, we'll find out. Captain Aldis! Are you going to die? Oh, he was not an essential character. Okay. You want me to try? Yeah, we'll try. I want to see what happens if you... Uh... Oh, there we go. Okay, so it literally won't let you feed on essential characters. All right, let's see where we're at in our destructions. We are looking for borrowed time. Yes. Aha, this is it. So after you have had 28 drainings, you unlock borrowed time. Deal 17 magic per damage for 20 seconds to the living or dead. When time runs out, deals all damage equal to all health lost by the target during that time. So for example, if we use Blood Garden, because that has... Actually, you know what? I want to test this out real quick. This is, is there anyone in here? Okay, I don't want humans in here for this initial test. So for borrowed time, I want to see if it's a one target or an area of effect. That, it looks like a single, whoa, what am I, hemorrhaging? That was weird. Okay, so borrowed time does damage over time, and it measures the damage that the target takes during that time. So it's recording. And then, it, let's say, for example, that in five seconds I did 500 damage. Borrowed time would record that, and then when the spell expired, inflict that amount of damage again. So in essence, you double your damage over time, over time if that makes any sense. So we'll, uh, let's see, these guys are essential. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're going to save first. So I'm going to hit our lovely general with Borrowed Time and then Blood Garden. And then once Borrowed Time expires, all the damage done by Blood Garden and Borrowed Time will be combined and doubled. So we're just going to uh, make our presence known. 
All right, so we're watching his health. It's going down. He's at a quarter. Coming up on half. I'm not even trying to fight now. I'm just watching his health bar. There should be a detonation. Where's the detonation? When is that supposed to happen? 20 seconds. All right, we're waiting for 20 seconds. Oh, wait, that's they get 3k. Wait, that's, that's the wrong person. Ah, all right, we'll try this again. That ought to ruin somebody's day. All right, I might have to kill everyone except the, the one guy that can't die. That's probably it. All right, we're going to wait for General Tullius to come after us. Come on, Mr. Essential. I know you want to... I need to measure the damage output of this spell. I do like the idea of those nice big red cloaks. Very, very vampiric. Oh, yeah. Feeling calm now, are you? Confident? Yeah? Let's find out. All right, so I've got 20 seconds. Oh, jeez. Now you're, now you're back. Oh, oh, she's essential, too. All right, then. So after 20 seconds, it should record all the damage and unleash it again. But I, don't, I was expecting some kind of a, a boom boom. I was looking for a boom boom. I'm a destruction mage. I was expecting a boom boom. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. That's borrowed time. Oh, okay. So I think you have to actually... There you go. Is it a touch spell? I think it might be a touch spell. That explains it. So my problem was that I wasn't even touching them earlier. All right. So borrowed time. I need another victim. All right. So this med... Oh, okay. I think it works. Oh, does it work as the damage is coming? No, when time runs out, deals damage equal to all health lost. Okay, so basically at the end of borrowed time, it will do damage equal to... Oh. Um, I'm healing off of all of this. <laughs> I just realized as I've got like six guys wailing on me that I'm not hurting. Um, and it's because I'm life draining all of them at the same time. These spells are like vampiric drains. This is beautiful. Oh, is this time going to expire soon? I want to see what this does. This time is going to expire, right? Yep. Okay. Well, I guess he's... Alright, he's essential. Alright. Bad example. Bad example. But as you can see, blood magic is freaking awesome. Alright, we're going to move on. Uh, yeah, dude, have you met me? I I am the embodiment of wrath. Just uh, not from your emperor, that's for sure. All right, moving on. Okay, so that was a lovely little demonstration. I don't know if I don't remember these spells actually being like drains. I don't remember them actually healing you. I don't think I have any equipment that's giving me life steal. Wow, that's awesome. All right then, let's just uh, move on. Goodbye, Jare. Anyone else want to uh, interfere? I'm gonna try and fast travel out of here, but first you gotta kill all the witnesses, you know. Just a little bit of uh, blood magic, and there he goes. Man, those spikes look painful. Look at that. That's just like ah. Whoa, what the? Oh, that was borrowed time going off. Okay. All right, so it looks like I'm far enough away from trouble. I should be able to pop over to somewhere else. Let's see if I can go home. Nope, enemies are nearby. Of course they are. Why wouldn't they be? I just ate a ridiculous amount of people. All right, well, I think we've found a good good spot. We'll pull a Batman and just uh, park ourselves right here overlooking the courtyard in, in which lie all of my hapless victims. Can't argue with that. All right, so... Thank you for joining me on my Hemomancy demonstration. This was for the Sacrosanct Quest Smolier. If you enjoyed this demonstration or found it instructive, feel free to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know down below which of all the blood magic spells was your favorite. I'm a particular fan of Blood Garden just because it explodes and hits everyone in the vicinity with your magic. Uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.